Hello there. Another little comparison of two guitars influenced heavily, cloned one might even say, from um, Martin Guitar Designs. Um, the first one, uh, both of these were built by Collins by the way in the 21st century. This is a 0002H which is a clone of the 0028 uh, from 1902 until 1929, I think. Um, and um, this one is the original Dreadnought. Uh, this is a DS2H built in 2007 by Collings. And it is as near as one can get realistically to a Martin D1, uh, sorry, D2 or D28 that was introduced by them in 1931 and discontinued in 1933. Um, one of the uh, more short-lived instruments, but I think one of the more superior. Let's just talk about the differences. Well, first of all, the scale length is the same. The, um, uh, the nut width on these is 1 and 13 sixteenths, but it would have been 1 and 7 eighths on the original Martins. Um, a 2 and 3 eighths inch spring spacing on the, on the Dread, and it's very slightly 1 sixteenths less, 2 and 5 sixteenths on this one. The bodies are different. So there's a little less volume there, um, slightly thinner, and slightly, uh, compare the two sides, um, a slightly smaller lower bout. Uh, we're talking about a difference of less than an inch, three quarters, but it makes a difference. This one was the last in the line of the neoclassical Gibson designs. Um, it was called an auditorium model, suitable for playing unamplified to a large audience size of audi uh, auditorium I haven't been able to ascertain, especially in 1902 when it was first introduced. Able to be flat picked, I use, um, as is recommended um, by both Martin and uh, Collings, um, light gauge strings, 53 to 12. Um, really designed as a finger style, but played notably with a flat pick by people like Jimmy Rogers. Meeting, of course, at the 12th, as were all Martin guitars until 1929, when this was converted to a rhythm guitar called the orchestra model by reducing um, the body size to meet at the 14th fret, um, moving the, um, the bridge a little bit forward and um, of course a slab head and a thinner neck. The Dreadnought, which had been designed for a company called Ditsons, who went out of business in 1929 during the Deep Depression, was introduced by Martins um, in 1931, also as an orchestra model, still thinking that they could get, maybe they could get um, some part of the market for dance band rhythm guitars, but really designed with the wider fretboard for finger picking, which it does admirably. But by 1933, they had realized that uh, there wasn't a great demand for these, and what people wanted were rhythm guitars, thin necks, for playing those banjo chord things and of course the burgeoning folk music scene that was happening around that time. So this was a short-lived experiment by Martins, reintroduced a lot now with the, uh, the, the Ditson 111 and then the 31 D28 31 Authentic and they bought out uh, various limited editions of this. And there's a small coterie of us guitarists that consider this the most superior design of Dreadnought that's ever been made. 
Um, being a dreadnought, of course, it has medium gauge strings, 56 to 13, and I play it with a slightly harder blue chip pick, but that's purely a matter of choice. Why do I prefer this over the 14 fret version? String spacing, the ability to move quickly around here without fluffing other notes. Again, personal preference, personal um, physiology, really. Uh, I, uh, I love these. I don't need to play up here when I'm going to play sort of rhythm guitar. I might use my arch tops, which have 14 frets. They're the only instruments that I have that have 14 frets. Um, a beautiful version of the original Martin D28 and the triple O, not a parlor guitar, but an auditorium guitar. It pays your money and you take your choice. Anyway, I hope that's of interest. If you have any questions on this, or comments, or you disagree with me about everything, please let me know in the comments. I love reading and replying to your comments. Anyway, I hope that's been useful to someone. Bye.